Hello all, my name's Peter. Uh, this is my 2017 Sierra F1000 Honda Africa Twin. Uh, what I want to explain to you today is uh, my left hand rear park brake setup that I um, installed onto my Africa Twin. As you can see, I still have my rear foot brake there, not the brake lever, rear foot brake lever. Coming up onto here, um, as you'll see, it is a DCT model, for your manual selection of the gears are there. On a DCT model, usually, when they come up, there is a lever up on here, and it is a rear park brake lever. To engage the park brake, you pull the lever back, there's a little lever on it, you ratchet it in, locks it in, and then it locks the, uh, engages the rear park brake, and the rear park brake is then locked. The rear park brake is separate to the actual uh, rear brakes on the bike. It's a uh, unit that sits underneath the rear. And I'll just come down here and explain it to you. So this one on top, this is your rear brakes. So when you activate your foot pedal over here, the rear brakes engage on this and locks up your, um, your discs. This unit under here is the park brake. It's totally separate. It's cable... Uh, actuated and the cable comes from here up to the um, where the brake handle usually leaves lever is up on the uh, bars I sourced another lever um, to put up on here just a short lever for a park brake lever so I've taken the park brake from here up onto here under the bars to activate this, like I said, it's a cable operator job. To activate this, squeeze the lever, little bar bar on here, drop the bar down, and the rear park brake is engaged. The bike won't move, so that's it, lock the bike up. To disengage it, pull it down, and that's it, little bar out of the way. Rear park brake's disengaged. The master cylinder that I have up on here, and also this lever, they are OEM Honda. They are off a 2018 Honda XADV 750 scooter. When researching, I found out that the 2018 XADV 750 scooter um, clusters and handlebar are exactly the same as an Africa Twin. Therefore, I knew that they would fit onto it, so I went to my local dealer where I purchased the bike from and asked about um, obtaining the, if, whether we could order these parts into Australia because they don't actually bring that scooter to Australia. He said yes, he could, so we searched, um, ordered them and they turned up, no problem at all. To buy the rear park brake um, lever and the master cylinder and the fittings to go with it were only $366. So that was a cheap buy for me. This here, I got my local mechanic um, to source for me, and he purchased this lever here for me and installed that. So, from now to um, this lever up here, park brake lever, this one down here, rear brake lever. Engage the rear brake, squeezing it, it locks up the rear brake. As you can see where it is, I had to make sure that when I did it, cleared all my, lever, my switches on the actual cluster, which it does. And with the uh, handbrake park brake being up on here, pull up on the bike, you see it comes up over the top and it's almost in line with the mirror. So I'm leaning right over the bike now, and you can see how far I'm actually over, basically above the screen. Um, and there's no way, my hand is nowhere, my wrist is nowhere near that lever. So there's plenty of room for that to there. I found it the best spot to put it was up there and it works. I've had it riding on the dirt and it works. Coming back around the bike, don't worry about my number plate. As I said, the rear lever, foot pegs, rear foot lever, sorry, still on there uh, and it activates the brakes. So push down on it, activates the rear brakes. If I squeeze the top lever, Activates the rear brakes, so they both activate the rear brakes, and you can use them both at the same time. You just feel the pressure on them. Coming down here, where the master cylinder is, this is the original master cylinder. Nothing's been changed. So from the foot uh, rear foot rear, rear brake assembly, the rear foot lever 
um, how it operates the rear brakes, all of that is exactly the same. There's no change in that at all. So the line feeding from the rear master cylinder through to the ABS servo, back down to the rear brakes, hasn't been altered at all. The only alteration we've done was the inline. Where you would normally have the brake reservoir, the rear brake reservoir here, feeding a line down and into the um, the brake master cylinder. Instead of doing that, we're using the reservoir for the master cylinder that's up on the left hand rear brake to feed down and into this master cylinder, pressurizing it and obviously activating the brakes. What we had to do to stop it because it's under pressure is this bolt that goes through into here, we've actually threaded internally inside the uh, master cylinder where you can see the flange coming into here, this in here has been threaded. I won't tell you the size of the threads or how many threads, but I will tell you it's damn strong and it's damn done and it's gone all the way in. I will leave information on here about who to contact to get that done. I didn't do that, my mechanic did it, my local mechanic. And he's, this right here is threaded all the way in so that there's plenty of strength in there. There's no way it's ever going to break and or leak. The, the seal and the O-ring is all still in there. So everything else is the same. It's just you shredded that, screwed that in, the fitting in, put the banjo bolt on there, and then that's how it works. So that's basically it. Up on here, left hand rear brake, park brake. If you want to, you can still leave the foot lever on, but I'm going to be taking that off. I went for a good ride yesterday after I got this back. And I don't need that on there. For the wiring, the wiring that comes down from the front brake to power up the rear brake light comes down through under here. All you do is tap into that wiring, run the wire down over the front, come up this side here, and connect it onto the switches here. That's it. So when you Powers up the rear brake light. When I rode it, uh, I had the ABS engaged. Used the um, left hand rear brake. ABS works as per normal. When I got onto the dirt, I disengaged the ABS because I don't usually ride with the rear ABS on on the dirt. Again, engaged it. Rear wheel locked up. Bike was skidding. And that's what I wanted to be able to do, lock the rear wheel up, get a bit of a skid if I want a cornering or whatever. So it's actually working with the ABS on or with the ABS off, it doesn't matter. Um, it works as per the bike normally works. There's been no, no change in it whatsoever. The only thing is I've got my rear brake up there and I find it's a lot easier to activate, especially when you're on a, um, on a hill and you want to, and it's a rocky hill or something like that, and you want to sort of manoeuvre yourself back down the hill or reverse yourself back down the hill or across the side of the hill, you can have both feet on the ground to maintain control of the bike because of the weight, and you've still got front and rear brake for better control of the bike. In those situations, even when I load and unload from my truck, uh, I've got ramps on it. When I'm coming down off the ramps, I can have the both front and rear engaged, and it makes the bike easier to get off because if not, when I found previously was, you squeeze the front brake, it doesn't hold the bike from sliding right down the ramps on the truck. So now I can put my feet up, my feet up on the on the pegs, I'll keep my feet flat on the uh, stands, front and rear brake, I've got control of the bike. So in a hilly situation, you've got better control of the bike. When I found when I was riding and cornering, it's a lot better to have feet planted on the pegs, you don't have to move them anywhere else to try and move for just for brakes or gears. This is all done up the hands and it's hard. Uh, it worked out really, really good. I was surprised how good it actually came out. So that's my setup. If anybody's got any questions, um, yeah, just put them onto the uh, Facebook page. But the mechanic that actually installed it for me, his name's Scott from Port Performance at Port Stephens, New South Wales, Australia. And he's a bit of a guru because he did, I believe he did his apprenticeship with Honda. And uh, I'll give you some more details on the um, part numbers and that on the Facebook page.